¿Qué pasa, mi gente? Welcome to another video. So, if you already know, I have changed my style of, of YouTube videos in general. And you also know that within the past video, I mentioned that I'm going through a lot of changes. It's a very transitional period for me. So, I figured it would be great if I talked about dealing with what I call a quarter life crisis. Let's get into it. And it's the next day. Um, I had a great night last night. I hang out with Eliana and her boyfriend, John Thorpe, which are some of my favorite people in the city, which is killing. And before that, we had a rehearsal for her big band. Which, if y'all are in New York City, uh, we're having a concert on December 12th in the Advent Lutheran Church on 93rd and Broadway, if I'm not mistaken. So if you're available, we're definitely having a concert. But uh, I wanted to get back into the original concept of this video in the first place, and it's this aspect of having a quarter-life crisis, uh, like I said earlier yesterday. But when, when people hear quarter-life crisis, they're like, quarter-life crisis, people usually hear like midlife crisis, right? And Usually that encompasses uh, a lot of things like maybe even materialistic things that you get into or maybe uh, Different hobbies that you get into that you weren't able to get into beforehand and so on and so forth But as far as I'm concerned my quarter-life crisis and I'm sure a bunch of people my same age are feeling the same thing especially after the pandemic is this kind of What am I gonna do now with my art basically like people either? have these certain situations where they get out of school, they used to be touring a bunch, they uh, are interested in other things at the moment, especially within music or just art in general, and I've noticed that I was having the same thing. I didn't want to believe it at first, but uh, here were some of the considerations. The first one being, do I really like and enjoy the things that I am doing currently? Like me, I had a background basically within jazz and that was my go-to for a long period of time i had my own masters in music within jazz performance and like for a long period of time i was like this is the music that i wanted to do or whatever and i quickly realized especially within the last year and i'm sure a lot of you feel the same is that i came to the realization that that's not necessarily all the music that i listen to first of all and it's not all the music that i want to play because considering i listen to a bunch of stuff like neo soul r&b uh folk music now even more so than ever through music therapy oh my gosh that rhymed uh bars should i be a rapper um <laughs> but a bunch of other things like in music from my own culture and and what have you literally and what i quickly realized is that what I liked wasn't necessarily what I was playing all the time. Like, it's like having like many pieces of a pie, right? And you're only humoring like one third of the pie, right? And then you're like, it, for me at least, it feels like you're forgetting the rest of the pie, like the two thirds of other things that could have had other topics like anchovies. Not like anybody likes anchovies, but I like anchovies. But you get what I'm saying here, like onions, peppers, uh, screw olives, I don't like olives. Uh, but a bunch of different things that people could have liked and could have developed over time, but that you started to just only humor that one slice of the pie so I sat down and I was just like I am not doing this anymore and the best way in order that I could humor everything instead of just sticking to one thing is through fusion and fusing all the all my likes and, and inspirations and stuff like that because at the end of the day I was having a conversation with a bunch of musicians and a lot of the music that I like especially since I was born was salsa music like that was just, when I was living in Puerto Rico, that was the music that was playing in my house all the time. You'd be hearing Celia Cruz, Hector Lao, Roberto Rena, like all these different things. And then I only got, recently got into jazz and black American music in general. So it's like, I sat down like by myself in my own back cave, like just to figure out this sort of thing. And I came to the conclusion that I want to do a mixture of Afro-Latin music with black American music. And within black American music, it's not strictly jazz, right? Because we're trying to stray away from the name of that, uh, or just, just call it what it is, which is basically black American music. But that music, in addition to other subgenres or main genres under black American music, which would be neo soul, regular soul, uh, ska, all these different types of genres that I've played in different situations with different artists. And I love all those things, like rap, hip hop. I, I, I love all of those things. I listen to all of those things consistently, but, I wasn't necessarily doing any of it, and I was—I felt like I was doing a disservice to myself, which brings me to the next point. But before we get into that, I'm gonna go practice first, or I'll little maybe just tell you what the second point is when I start practicing. So we're back in our in our cave as usual. My glasses just fell off. That was embarrassing. But the second point, before I get started here, is basically stop going by what people expect of you and start by going by what you expect of yourself. And you might be asking like, Pedro, what does that mean? Start by going by 
uh, what you expect of yourself. What I mean is that like a lot of times when musicians go into their creative lives or their creative ventures or whatever, it can be even applicable to a bunch of different things, but uh, a lot of times people will definitely do the things that they feel like other people think that they should be doing. Using myself as a big example, people have known that I already have a master's degree in jazz, so then therefore they're like, oh, you should probably be doing jazz, you know, that sort of thing. It's the thing that you went to school for. You shouldn't be a business owner, you shouldn't be going into music therapy, you shouldn't be thinking about making Afro-Latino music mixed with Black American music. And a lot of the things that I'm doing now are things that I expect of myself, that what I expect to get out of my life. So say like you just got out of like college or something and you're a bio major, right? Like the immediate assumption for everybody else, especially of your family, depending on how's your relationship with your family, would be to go into something within biology, right? But let's say ph photography was like a side hustle or like a thing that you were doing in the past that wasn't necessarily uh, your main interest, but at the time it was kind of something that you did as for fun. And then you realized that was something that you wanted to continue and you wanted to continue humoring. So after school, you're like, screw it. I'm gonna be a photographer and that's what I'm gonna do. But when you do that, you're inclining for that certain thing that you didn't necessarily put precedence over your original thing, which is biology, will have much more inspiration because you made the decision, you made the choice in order to switch. Like for example, another example in my life was that since I was six years old, I wanted to be a chef. Point blank period. Like my parents were like expecting me to go to culinary school and that sort of thing. And I was gonna go uh, off into Europe after studying in the US a bit of culinary, you know, like Italy, France, Spain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I went to a jazz concert in New York and I just was captivated by the whole vibe, like the music, the people, the, the, the audience, like it was just something that I was so captivated by, so then I made the switch. But that was my decision. Obviously my parents were like, you wanna go into music, but you spent all this time on cooking, what happened? Then I made sure what I expected of myself take precedence over what everybody else expected of me. And then eventually my parents like followed through with support and whatever, because they're super supportive. But obviously, you know, from the jump, there was that initial pushback. And I'm not saying that you're not gonna get pushback from other people, that it's just like, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, but what about you've been doing this for a number of years? Oh, but you originally have a business within this practice. Like, it doesn't matter. What you want to do in your life is up to you. You know what I'm saying? And if, if it, it happens to be music, great. If it happens to be photography, great. If it happens to be a biology, great. But that doesn't mean you should let other people affect it. I know it's like human nature, uh, Q and Michael Jackson. I know it's human nature to compare yourself to others or what others have going on and that sort of thing. But what people don't understand is that literally, even though it's part of human nature to compare yourself or like dwell on negative things, by doing that, by comparing yourself to another person, you're literally putting yourself in the mindset of saying that I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not capable enough in order to do a certain thing or task or objective. And then you're basically casting by the wayside your, your capabilities as a person, especially within your practice if you put so many hours and years into something and then all of a sudden you're saying like, oh, that person has a lot more and they're in my industry and that sort of stuff. There are a bunch of 25 year olds that are doing way better than I am at currently in the music industry. Like Bad Bunny is the biggest example that I can even think of right now he's like 25 or something like that also like the same age and he's like a multi-millionaire at this point as, as an artist you know within Dragon Ball and like you could definitely say the same thing about other people like uh, even youtubers like Austin Dunham um, the roommates even though they're a little bit older than I am like these these people they just happen to have very lucky careers and also they had the skill set in order to complete certain tasks within those uh, streams of luck or opportunities that they created themselves 
uh, through all the things that they can do. So what I'm trying to say here is it's like, it would be easy to like literally go onto somebody's platform, like Instagram for uh, example, which is like the worst one, or TikTok or YouTube or whatever, and be like, oh my gosh, that person has that, that many subscribers. Oh my gosh, that person has that many followers. Oh my gosh, that, that person has that many views. But the whole point of why you're doing what you're doing is because you enjoy it. You, it brings you enjoyment or it brings you financial stability or whatever it is. And a lot of times we tend to forget that, which literally could breed like fuel to our like quarter life crisis, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we're within a quarter life crisis, it's like a transitional period for the next chapter in our life, for the next 25 years or the next 50 years or the next 75 years. Hopefully I can get to 100 years old. But you're setting yourself up for failure because at the end of the day, you'll be a person that's so obsessed with the other person's success and trying to be better than, than what they are. You shouldn't be comparing yourself to other people, you should compare yourself to yourself and how you were yesterday and how you can do better today. I think it was the, the Way of the Superior Man by David Data. Awesome recommendation. But yeah, it's just like try not to like compare yourself to somebody who probably had a, a very lucky stream of events in their life or they had the circumstances in which to do so or the capital in order to do so, whether it be in music or uh, in biology, like the example that I gave in earlier, photography doesn't matter. Only compare yourself to how you were yesterday and how you can improve on that tomorrow, today, and for years to come. I think I'm gonna end the video here because I have to practice for a midterm um, that I have for my music therapy degree. We basically have to play a couple tunes on piano and guitar, and I have to practice that sort of stuff. And it won't be the most fun things, but it's, you know, songs that I've been using within my clinical site. Unfortunately, I can't show y'all some of the footage of that place considering confidentiality of the clients and whatnot, but it's a lot of fun. I'm bringing a lot of kids, and it's really funny sometimes. So. Anyway, thank you for rocking with me in this video, mi gente. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment anything that you feel like commenting and subscribe and turn the bell notifications on because I'm trying to put videos out like this every single week and you don't want to miss them. I hope to see you in the next one and have a great day.